Hey everybody, this is Harold from Buckeye Reviews, and today we have the Phoenix PD36R, a furniture review. We'll be doing a second beam shot and trail test video, so do make sure you also hit like and hit subscribe, because pretty soon we will be giving away free Phoenix lights, but you have to be on the subscriber list, and you have to comment when I post that link. Not today. We're not there yet. We need more subscribers. So help me out. Help us out. We can help get some people to my page and share this. So the PD36R. This was a light that I was super excited to get. Um, and in full disclosure, this is a review light sent to me by Phoenix Worldwide. Um, of course, um, you know, I, I call things as I see them. If there's something I don't like, I tell you. I'm, I'm, that's just the way I work, and they realize that. And there's a few things I, I want to point out that I don't like, and there's a whole lot of things I do like. So what do you get? Obviously, you get the light, the packaging. Pretty simple, basic packaging for Phoenix. There's the pertinence on the back. And it gives you a, <clears throat> pardon me, a pretty good idea of what's going on here. It's a powerful light, folks. This thing is no joke. Now, the one one I really want to point out is medium. 350 lumens, eight and a half hours. And folks, I can confirm that regulation is flat through all eight hours. It is absolutely bone flat. Your turbo and high are not flat. They do step down. However, a good chunk of those times are flat regulation. And obviously, low and eco, flatter and a flitter, as they call them. So you obviously get the box. It's just a simple hang tag box with a plastic insert. It's nothing right home about. You do get the lanyard. Okay. These are the good Phoenix lanyards. Um, I have one of these on my E20. It's like almost 10 years old now. Now the difference is, is on the smaller newer lights like the E30, uh, they're giving you these little guys. So a lot thinner, a lot smaller, but still a good lanyard. But it wouldn't make sense to put that big lanyard on a little light or a little, <laughs> you get my point. Um, you also get um, tail switch cover, spare O-ring plus that. And you get the holster. Um, now, Phoenix, we got to have a talk about this. Um, the holster is. Let's see if we get in there, nose down. It, it kind of gets stuck. Um, you can get it in there, but you got to kind of work it in there. So, yeah, I'm not too happy with the holster. Um, let me see if I can get it in tail first. I haven't really tried that. Yeah, that's not working. So you can get it in there, but it's going to require a little French or whatever language you want to use. So on the on the holster part of it, I don't know why I keep. I don't think I've had enough coffee today, man. I've just called a holster a lanyard. I called a lanyard a lanyard. At least I got that right. So okay, we're going to walk through this again because this is something we need to take a look at. So head down, bezel down. Try to get it in there. The belt clip wants to stick. There we go. Well. Okay. So it's going to take a little work. I would imagine with this holster, it's going to stretch. So what do I think of the holster? I don't. I don't like it. Um, I think that they, we could do better in the holster, Phoenix. I'm sorry. You also get the PD36R manual. And got, there's that runtime I was telling you about. Right there at about three-ish. Look at that, all eight hours. But you'll also notice on high, which starts off right in there. Of course, it's not colored, but you can get the point. This is going to be high right there. And you can see it's pretty, it's not bad. It steps down. But the media, man, that is the winner winner right there, right? That is awesome. You got your mode selection. So we'll go through the modes, um, definitely. And you've got your little information booklets with different lights in them and your warranty card. All important stuff here. So, so far, it's a home run, except for the holster. I, I'm sorry. I, I love Phoenix. I love you guys, but we can do better. Uh, the light itself, though. Oh, and 
the lamb, right? Like I said, I think the days of the 18650 are drawing closer to an end. And I want to show you why I mean that. Right here I have a Wubin TO40R. This is a pretty nice little light from Wubin. We're going to do a size comparison between these two. 18650, 21700. So, pretty even, right? A little bit of a size comparison of this and the M2T Warrior, which is kind of falling apart on me there. So, head to head. So, really, what you're getting is it's not a whole lot wider, right? You're looking at a longer light. Uh, now, I'm going to compare this to the Phoenix TK15UE, and this is where they're pretty much almost head to head. Right? TK is just a little bit longer, but TK is also a different type of light. Um, comparing to the Womp and MR70 Rofus, the 26650 light. Also comparing it to its little brother, the E30R, which is, man, you see what I almost did. This is why I need a new tripod, guys. Y'all got to help me out here, man. All right. Look how tiny the E30 is. Oh, my God. It's, <laughs> the thing is so small. I love that E30. So, <clears throat> this light, I think, was, um, you know, like I said, the PD35 TAC. The UC, the P35, PD35, the version 2 versions of them were awesome lights by Phoenix. They sold tons of those things. They were a success. They always have been a success. Um, but, you know, some of the technology was, was, it needed to catch up. Like a lot of those lights were rocking, you know, micro USB, whatever. They had older LEDs in them. Um, I, I think the time for the PD-36 was now, and I think it was a great move by Phoenix. Uh, based on what I've seen, you know, the beam shots I've seen, this is an extremely well-balanced light. It's not the biggest thrower, it's not the biggest flutter, but this light is all about balance. And let's just talk about the light a little bit more, right? So the finish, typical Phoenix, really good quality. Uh, the machining work is just beautiful spin it around a little bit here and you'll notice um, some distinct similarities in the machining work and the type of finish between the E30 and this light it's like the E30 is its baby brother right What a beautiful light. They really did a heck of a job. Now, the modes, nice and simple. Um, it will remember your last setting, so momentary on, just half press, just tap, click to on, reverse. While on, you've got eco, low, medium, high turbo which is now burning my hand press to hold half second strobe press that again it'll go back to the, that mode you were last in so if I start off in low mode and I go straight to strobe when I press out a strobe it'll be back in low mode when I turn the light off and I turn it back on it'll still be in low mode same as with high turn it off turn it back on I'm still in high so we do have memory I do not see any kind of a way to lock the light out except to do that. So you could do a slight turn of the head, and there you go, light's locked out mechanically. Um, it is 1600 lumens with an SST40 LED. And this light is already showing the hallmarks of a Leo light. And the Leo light was made with Charles Wiggins with CF. Charles, see, it's CWF lights, customized Charles Wiggins. Look him up. 
Um, he makes some beautiful lights. If you've not seen a Wiggins light, you're missing out. Oh my God, the dragon. It's just beautiful stuff he's got, he's got going on. Um, but he made an M1 light based, I believe, with a FET driver. And the lights had an SST40 and an M1 convoy body. And to this day, that's one of the best performing lights I have ever seen in my life when it came to a light that was good at everything, right? I mean, it really was good at everything. Now, the light had spectacular throw. It had spectacular spill. It was efficient. It was powerful. The tent was dead on. And this has <clears throat> a, lot, <clears throat> a lot of those hallmarks that the M1 Leo light had um, that I'm such a fan of. Um... <clears throat> Man, what a beautiful light this is. I think Phoenix really, really knocked it out of the park. So it's reminding me already, the bit that I played with it, it's reminding me of the M1 light a little bit. And that's saying something because that Leo light <clears throat> was no joke. Just take another look at this bad boy. I'm trying to get this to focus here. IP68 rated, of course, one meter drop, which I'm sure it can do a whole lot more than that. God, all you guys with your shelf cranes are grimacing right now, aren't you? IP68, of course. I don't really accept anything less than that. So, I cannot wait to get out and do beam shots of this. And again, we want to do some comparisons. Um, like of the Wubin, just size comparisons. Olight M2T. Yeah, that's a defective o ring. I guess I can try to put it back together. Phoenix TK15 UE. This is my other favorite light. Go through modes. TK15 on the left, PD26 on the right. There's lowest. Low, low, medium, medium, high, high, turbo. Oh, that was already turbo, so. What a beauty, man. So, good job, Phoenix. I mean, gosh, this light is so exciting. Um, the only thing, again, that I'm not liking, there's a couple things I don't like. I don't like the holster. And I don't like, I cannot tail stand this light. So, again, trigger warning for you guys that never scratch your lights. But, yeah, um, you can't tail stand it. You can head stand it, and there is crenulations on the bottom, so you can get some spill. Kind of like you can on the TK, right? You can get that light coming out from underneath it. And that creates a little bit of ambient lighting, sure. Oh my god, the wood's burning hot. Um, yeah, I'd sit my picnic table on fire with a light. That'd be a new one. So, you cannot tail stand it. And the holster. What else do I not like about it? That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. And, you know, that that's, to me is not the biggest deal with the holster because, I mean, I use aftermarket holsters anyway for, like, search stuff. I don't I don't use the manufacturer stuff. I, I never have. Ah, the tail stand's not a deal breaker. For some people, it may be. So those are what I don't like. What I do like, the beam pattern, the brightness is phenomenal. Um, I do like that. I do like the build quality. I like the heft of this light. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's nice to carry a light that doesn't weigh a whole lot around and you know but this thing is substantial you know you're carrying this light there's no doubt about that so beam shots coming up we're going to do a pretty comprehensive beam shot with measured distances i want to make sure you know i definitely get it right with this light when it comes to beam shots Oh, yes. One more thing to chit-chat about was the charging. Obviously, you do get the Type-C charging. So we're going to do that right now. And it does have a battery meter on the side. 
which will double has your button there. And obviously that button will also let you know the status of your battery when you turn it on with flashes and colors. So yeah, right now she's charging. And that's another thing I like is the ability to charge out in the field. So, you know, like my phone uses type C where some of my lights are using micro USB. So when I go out for days or something, I have to carry two different cords. This kind of solves that problem of carrying excess stuff because now here we go, right? I can just charge it on the go and we're good to go. Real nice feature. And it does charge pretty fast considering the size 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, pretty good size. So again, be looking for in the next day or so a comprehensive beam shot review and we will take it from there again go to phoenixlighting.com go to phoenix store or whatever country you're in go to phoenixlight.com and look it up and they could find the distributor nearest you we're in over 130 countries so there's a phoenix near you more than likely guarantee you that be looking for this review hit that subscribe button cheers